Hey everyone, so this is going to be a really fun, quick video of how to add some realistic grain using Infinite Luma. The purpose of this is actually pretty simple, and it's a principle that when you have grain in film, what happens is the grain is different in density based on your highlights and shadows and so forth. So it transitions differently based on the region of the image. That's kind of what my purpose is. I'm going to go ahead and enhance and compress some of these uh, highlights here so you can get a better gradation, even though you wouldn't do this normally. This is just for example purposes, so you can see the transition uh, a little bit better since we're adding more contrast effectively. So now you can see that there's definite shadows and definite highlights. So that's going to be the first step. And this is shot by Stefan, who is my partner here at Infinite Tools. Sorry about that, Stefan. It's it just it happened. You know, that's how it is. <laughs> Next, we're going to just apply some simulation grain. I should say it's it's actually noise. But for the purpose of this, I'm just going to call it grain. Now, you can also do grain overlays like grain scans and then use Luma to transition nicely. So I'll fill the contents of this layer with a 50% gray. I just hit shift delete on a blank layer, came up with this menu option, 50% gray, change the blend mode to soft light for a second since it doesn't really do anything. It's going to be the canvas for which noise is going to sit on. And it's, that's the way that the noise is applied to the image. So I'll go to filter, noise, and then add noise. And let's reduce the a little bit too much. I'll click on uniform. I like uniform a lot. And I'll do something like that. I'll say, okay, cool. That looks great. Now that that's applied, I'm going to turn that off for just a second. Let's go ahead and select everything but the highlights and a little bit of the midtones. What I did was I basically took the range a little bit beyond the midtones and then increased my smoothness. And that's the best way to kind of go about things if you want to look at it like that. Because it's going to, uh, you know, start transitioning the smoothness from here um, onwards. So that's how I, I kind of look at it. Now that's done. I'm going to click on group here. I'll say create. And then I will take turn this on and then put this into the group itself. And of course, there's many ways to do that. If you haven't seen the main video, go to the page at infinite-tools.com and you can see the main overview video explaining Infinite Luma. Okay, cool. Now that you've done that, I'll also put in the link in the description. So let's go ahead and analyze what just happened here. So I'll simply click on option and click on the mask. And you can see here, anything that's black doesn't have anything in it. Anything that's white has 100% and everything in the middle transitions nice and gradually. So of course, you know, you can see that the shadows themselves are really dense in, in the noise. And, and when it gets here to like the face, it gets a little bit less and it goes into the highlights. It's pretty much almost non-existent. And of course, if you want some of it to be in the highlights, that's OK, too. You'd simply just need to kind of, you know, go ahead and redo it like this. Um, increase the smoothness and you just want to see a little bit of the yellows in the highlights. Maybe reduce this. Let's increase it like this and just bring it like all the way here like that. So, you know, some of the highlights are kind of being selected like this. And then I'll just uh, right click on the create button and it replaces the mask like that. So the highlights have a little bit uh, still in there. So there you go. You can see here now that uh, the grain is transitioning differently from the brightest point all the way to the darkest point. And this is also further amplified the more you look at areas like this and like this. It just has a different level. You can see here from the, like the shadows and highlights. So this is just another level to add variation and different levels of intensity to grain or pretty much anything else. Even if you say did a curve and you went to the blue channel and you decreased it, it's increasing more in the shadows and the midtones than it is the highlights. This can be very advantageous if you want to say color grade like this and then perhaps duplicate that folder, invert that folder mask like this. So instead of this, it's like this and now only the most of the highlights are selected. And then over here, 
uh, you know, do the opposite if you if you so if you so choose to, like this or or like this. So you're basically just color grading them independently. But because this is an example of grain, and I don't want to get too sidetracked, you get an idea of how these luminosity masks can be used for textures and colors. And if you want to see more of this stuff, go to our page. There's other videos on the Academy. You can go down, scroll down to the Infinite Luma page at the bottom. You'll see all these other videos.